Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody present over here. I'm Elan, participating in the Young Scientist Program, and we are uh, connecting over here in the blue icon. So I'm going to present on the topic of detecting atmospheric disequilibrium of methane as a biosignature. So uh, my research advisor is Dr. Graham Lau, and in collaboration with Dr. Tony and Dr. Chaitanya. So let's see what I have for presentation today. Now, can really methane support life? Why methane? Is that, well, uh, methane in the atmosphere in an abundance is the reason because life produces it constantly. And we really can't rely on oxygen as a biosignature because, well, take Earth. 2.5 billion years ago, the planet was not oxygenated uh, entirely. So uh, methane can be really uh, narrowed down to be a biosignature and an abundant methane presence in any planetary atmosphere would be unlikely to be caused by geologic features like volcano and only be caused on, um, in a major uh, abundance because of the presence of biological origin. Why do, uh, do I say this so? Let's see in this slide where we see methane as a biosignature. So when we take the Earth's e equilibrium value, there is an abundant methane flux, which is constantly replenished by um, methanogenic bacteria, by a process called methanogenesis, which converts into methanotropy. But that it doesn't count for all the planets because they're, um, you know, de depending upon the different types of star spectra, the in uh, indication of methane as a biosignature differs. We'll see this in detail. Before that, we'll know more about methanogenesis. So what is actually methanogenesis? It is nothing but a process um, uh, produced by bacteria or microbes like archaea on the planetary surface. So it is done by two methods. One is acetoclastic methanogenesis, which is an anaerobic process that is in the absence of oxygen. The bacteria or archaea fermentate um, um, the presence of as different type of um, um, anaerobic compounds like acetate to form a combination of methane and carbon dioxide. The second type is hydrogenotrophic methanogenesis, where the uh, archaea doesn't use oxygen but other oxidants to yield the byproduct of methane combined with water. So these two are the different types of methanogenesis happening on Earth. But the question is, can we narrow down the presence of methane on other planets under these two uh, processes? Let's see that in detail. So why methane as an indicator of life? Well, the classic example is the disequilibrium compound we can see in the present in the atmosphere of Earth. That is a disequilibrium of oxygen and methane. So in this context of Earth, where there is uh, atmospheric composition of different concentrated gases like nitrous oxide, um, carbon dioxide, and volcanic outgassing happening, and also there is a constant ultraviolet bombarding of stellar starlight. So uh, in this case, oxygen can uh, have can have a geologic lifetime of two approximately two million years. But the gases like methane and nitrous oxide do have photochemical periods of 12 to 150 years respectively. What does this mean is that uh, other gases like methane or nitrous oxide, they can uh, they can be easily uh, photochemically affected by the cellular light. But if there is an abundance of flux, ex, uh, abundance of um, flux of these concentrated gases noted on the atmospheres of exoplanets, it means that it is being constantly replenished by the process of biological origin. And that is why it is important to study methane as a biosignature. Well, we do have an advantage because we do have proxies in our solar system system where there is presence of methane and other compounds in mixture. One example is Titan, where on Titan, we, we see a liquid surface that is not composed of water, but it is a mixture of liquid water and ammonia, which is basically a liquid ethane and methane lake. So what's happening on Titan is that there is a constant outgassing of um, outgassing of volcano that pumps methane into uh, Titan's nitrogen atmosphere, but there is a, a slight 5% um, accumulation of methane as well. If we look into this picture where we see Titan as an orangish hazy planet, that is how we view Earth as an exoplanet as well. It is because of the presence of uh, concentrating gas of methane. So uh, the question is whether on uh, Titan, this is produced by the uh, acetoclastic hydrogen, um, hydrogen uh, methanogenic uh, process, 
or uh, the hydrogen uh, gen genotrophic process. So there is another example, which is Enceladus, a moon of Saturn. So the Cassini-Huygens mission detected trace amounts of methane being spewed into, uh, from the plumes of Enceladus. So the question is, could there be Earth-like microbes, that is hydrogenotropic meth methanogenic microbes that are eating the dihydrogen and undergoing this hydrogenotropic methanogenesis process that is causing the presence of methane under the uh, subsurface of uh, Enceladus? So if we answer this question, we can really narrow down whether microbes are producing these methane and tie it up to uh, methane as a biosignature. So let's not forget Mars because there is also presence of methane on Mars. So it is not new because um, um, Opportunity and Spirit Rover have detected methane on the surface of Mars. And now um, Curiosity has followed up and have detected uh, trace simplest amounts of organic compounds of methane uh, using its sample analysis at Mars or nicknamed as SAM. So how do we really extrapolate it to methane on exoplanets? So here, that, this is where we are um, concentrating on type of star and also why if there is an abundance of methane, it is, uh, it is tied to a biosignature presence. It is because as we uh, saw in the past slides, if there is a constant methane flux, it has to be uh, constantly replenished by a source. And that can be really linked to biological sources, but it doesn't happen on all the plan, uh, type of exoplanets and all the type of stars. We can uh, put um, methane as a confident biosignature around G type of stars like sun, which is very similar to our star, uh, like 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin, and also to K type of stars, which, uh, which has 3,500 to 5,000 Kelvin temperatures. So um, this can be done under two methods. One is by astronomical models. So this current data suggests that uh, in the hot Jupiter type of exoplanets, which are orbiting around K and M dwarf system, which were used uh, um, which were used infrared telescope facilities to as a detection technology, uh, it shows that the spectral um, bands between 1.6 to 2.2 mu meter shows constant presence of methane. So this can be used as a prominent feature in the spectrum to pin down to biosignature of methane. So what are the other type of detection technologies? So one such promising detection technology is the James Webb Space Telescope, which is an upcoming ambitious mission. So JWST uses narrowband photometry and low to medium resolution of infrared spectroscopy to really detect planets like super Earths and hot Jupiters. So how does it do that? It's because JWST carries a suite of four science instruments like NIRSPEC, MIRI, NIRCAM, and NIRIS. So we'll be focusing more on NIRCAM and NIRIS because these two uh, instruments are used to picture the atmosphere of exoplanets and also to detect the spectroscopic analysis of atmospheric gases present over there. So how, does, how is it being done? Is that these are the NIRIS performance indicators where it uses broadband imaging and wild field slitless spectroscopy between the range spectrum of uh, 1.6 mu meter where it can detect really mixture of methane and other concentrating gases as a viable biosignatures and only around hot Jupiters and super Earths. So uh, this is the near infrared spectroscope results as evidently seen, which is an example how JWST will process the function. So the near spec um, uh, spectrograph, it can it is capable of nearly observing more than 100 astronomical objects, which means scientists are pretty much busy with JWST, and it is able to provide low, medium, and high resolution spectroscopic observations. With that, let's look into the summary and um, focus on what other gas combinations with methane can be really uh, useful or uh, as a viable biosignature. So these kind of remote sensing biosignatures for exoplanet doesn't just um, involve particularly methane, but also it can be expected from abiogenic processes like serpentinization, which is a geologic process. But um, the thing uh, is, uh, it can't be a compelling remote biosignature unless it is a constant flux, which we see on atmospheric disequilibrium of gases. So there can also be simultaneous presence of other combination of gases, examples like ozone or presence of oxygen and methane and nitrous oxide, which may also indicate that there is presence of life. And this can be done majorly on ammonia or hydrogen dominated worlds. Now, there are other uh, 
gases which we shouldn't forget and other type of planets where in an ocean world there could be combination of both oxygen and nitrogen and there could also be simultaneous presence of all gases like nitrogen methane carbon dioxide and liquid water like we see on earth so we uh, so how can we really um, put our bet on methane is that if the disequilibrium ratio is greater than 0 0.001 in the disequilibria flux scale, then this can really be tied to the biogenic presence of methane because it is very difficult to maintain a large abiotic methane flux at this scale under anoxic atmospheres. And um, this can be really uh, tagged to super earth atmospheres where um, the UV photolysis process, where the, um, the sun spectra really breaks down the molecules of methane and other gases on the atmosphere. So if it is, doesn't mean breaking down, it means there is a life source or biological source, which is constantly replenishing and newing the planet, filling it with methane and other type of gases. So what are the para, um, specification parameters for observation of these kind of planets is that JWST's near spec spectra uh, will have to um, uh, tra uh, observe transiting Earth-like planets around M, M type of stars. And also it has to determine 10 transits that is approximately up to 1.4 hour transit duration and a 28 year, uh, hours of observation time that is needed to detect water uh, absorption features and also in a transmission rate of four sigma detection threshold. With that, I would uh, love to thank you all for listening to me. I'm ready to take up any questions. Thank you so much. Yay, great job, Elon. Let me allow people to unmute themselves if they like. Um, we have one question already in the chat from Anarup. Um, he wants to know, so with, with curiosity, we've seen seasonal fluxes of methane in the near surface at Mars um, that haven't been observed as well from orbit. And he wants to know what your opinion is on that being related to methanogens potentially. Well, uh, Mars is a really an enigma. Um, you know, we have been, uh, you know, uh, at the back of Mars for really centuries now. The thing is, there is no evident surface features which we can really tie up to um, any form of biological origin. So uh, there are techniques like either the life would have gone underground and we don't see evidently any kind of geological process, which is uh, as an, you know, as an evidence happening above the ground. So if we are able to, uh, you know, and detect some kind of uh, Im like chemical imprints on the rocks or something from the subsurface, which by drilling can be done. Any, um, you know, uh, really a good evidence so that uh, we can uh, tie up uh, that with a biological source. Right now, we don't have that kind of evidence, but maybe in the future. Awesome. We have a question from Tanvi Agarwal. Uh, feel free to unmute Tanvi and ask your question. Uh, hi, before I begin, I would like to say that the, the, uh, the talk is very amazing and very informative in every little aspect, be it in presentation or be it in the experimentation. Well, while uh, listening to the uh, presentation right now, to the talk, uh, it just went in my head that we have clear evidence uh, for the experiment led by S.L. Miller about the about how the life would have possibly been originated by methane. So if, if we decide or think about that if we choose a certain planet and there are a lot of methane over there, like instead of Mars and wait for it to life to begin there. Is that can be possible way or we should wait for that very particular planet for how life will begin there in its own methane way. Yeah, very good question. Thank you for the compliments and question, Tanvi. I would say that, um, you know, it's um, it's just our curiosity and to understand whether lives are uh, evolving on exoplanets. Um, we really can't put a bet if there is, uh, you know, any kind of biological life for sure happening on those planets. Uh, only if we are able to confirm it, we'll be able to let it evolve. And another thing is, even though we are able to bio, uh, detect uh, microbial biological signs on other planets, um, in that case also, we can't be able to do anything about it. We just know that life is ubiquitous. So that will be the end result. I would say not contaminate Earth or any other planet by forward or backward. That would be my uh, thing before, uh, you know, um, making space exploration really aware among all the, you know, all the people on Earth. So that would be my answer. 
Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Elon. Uh, other questions can go to the Blue Psycon channel on our Slack workspace.